This is the first time we see beluga in St. Lawrence River. What a sight! The beluga whale is an arctic and subarctic citizen. The adult male will weigh up to 3,000 pounds compared to the female that it will be just 2,000 pounds. The scientific name of the beluga is Delphinaterus luca. And did you know that the beluga can change the shape of their forehead by blowing air around their sinuses? It's an endangered species. In the mating season, it's late winter. And the life expectancy of the beluga whale is between 35 to 50 years. Wow, when you look at this map, we left Lake Erie, went to Lake Ontario, the Thousand Island, Montreal, oh, Quebec there. City, and now we're further in St. Lawrence. Right there. Oh man. So, nope, right there. Another there. one there. A whale around us. Coming towards us. I hate it. Right there. Oh man. I fucking hate it. Oh, right there. Oh my god, coming at us. Holy fuck. Oh fuck, he was right there. He's going with me. Oh fucking Lord. Oh fuck me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Stay right there. Yeah. Oh wow, right there. Yeah, we were in the well we're around us. Oh, right there, behind us. They're swimming behind us, too. There's one right there, honey, at uh, 5 o'clock. Following us.
Right there. Do you have the next episode ready to upload? Uh, no, I should uh, work on it, right? That will be the part of the... Next uh, time we land, I want to try to get one or two episodes up. Okay. I want to tell the story of the nasty anchorage, the bad night, and the puking... When I puked up beer foam. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. It's kind of like a cool story. I don't have footage of me vomiting, but... Okay, we're working. It's interesting <laughs> that, that you would shake up the beer in your stomach so much, it would make you vomit. Like, it would foam up and cause you to vomit. That's crazy. And it's up 12 beer. It was one beer. Single beer, but we were shaking yeah. and moving <laughs> so much. Our physical bodies were getting thrown around so much. Yeah. It foamed the beer in my guts. Like, that's crazy. When you look at that scene, this is the joy of sailing. Nice running wind, sunny day, not too cold. It's getting colder now in St. Lawrence. But look at that. Beautiful. Enjoy. So in the end, it's uh, maybe an hour and a half, and uh, I'm just relaxing because we're running. Uh, wind is between 10, 12. We're doing between. 4.5 to 5.2. Great. So the goal today it's uh, 52, uh, 55 miles. That would be great. Um, we had a slow start. The wind was up there, two, three knot. Then after four, five, six knot, eight knot, we're doing four, three. So hopefully we're going to catch up. The, the wind is steady. It's increasing. You see the white cap a little bit more, so it's increasing. Uh, today's Friday, yeah. So it's a very nice day. It's sunny, so I'm just relaxing here. Steady wind, so you have time to have talk about it. all our mileage we did already. When you think about it, uh, we left Port Colborne on August 12th, and less than a month later, we'll be in Gaspésie. So we're going to turn. Today we're turning uh, shortly. I see the point there after that we're turning down. So we're starting after that to go more uh, west, southwest. Now it's east. So. And uh, it's high, it's colder. You keep your coat because it's fresh and the wind is fresh. The sun is very, very warm, so that's great. So, so that's it for now at this point. The wind is dying now. I'm going to start pointing into the wind. We need to take the preventer off the boom. Yep. So we're going to scoop around into windward. So you see two sailboats at Anchorage. That's where we're going. It's a little bit tricky. If you look here, there's rock. Need to pass longer right there and turn on our starboard side. So it's uh, 20 to 6 o'clock, and we're going to drop the anchor, have a nice dinner, and tomorrow morning the wind is supposed to be uh, favorable again. We'll be on the beam reach or uh, running, so that's great supposed to be a strong wind. That morning it was pretty special. 
fog all around us. It was tricky sailing under motor to get to Rimouski. You'll see the footage. It's very foggy and uh, it's pretty uh, nice scenery. We're under engine, radar is on, of course, and uh, it's we're in the fog. So we're going towards Rimouski, and uh, there's the wind is 10 knot, but not the direction it was supposed to be. And uh, so we'll see. So the where the intention is to go to Rimouski and if there's no change we'll stop at Rimouski go and see uh, Rimouski downtown Rimouski to try to download some video update a few things so but that's at the moment should be taking two hours to get to Rimouski And the Ramuski ferry disappears out into the fog. We've dropped our anchor in Ramuski and basically came in blind because the river is completely enshrouded in fog. But lo and behold, on shore the fog is completely lifted and we're clear. So now we can see where we are. Almost as soon as we drop the anchor, suddenly the fog lifted on land. This is the port of Ramuski. Although we can see where we are now, and the fog is lifted here, it's still foggy on the water. And you can see there's not enough wind to sail. But at least we found a better place to spend the day. We can go into shore, maybe go, for, go for, out for a meal. We can resupply, dinghy into the marina. The marina of Ramuski, if you stop there, you'll be welcome. People are nice and the manager of the marina was so helpful. Thank you so much for everything. So Lexi took the time to upload a video. We are getting time to relax because we hit the road tomorrow sailing again. This is a lovely picture of Lexi with the marina manager of the marina of Rimouski. We met a guy from the slip just beside us who owned a CNC 40. Now of Rimouski, we just look behind me, there's wild child, we just fuel diesel, top the tank, so it doesn't use too much, but it will be a long time before we get fuel.